morning all. Right, we're uh, going down to the hide just for a couple of hours and uh, quite a few few little jobs to sort out because not been down for, uh, well, funnily enough, I went down yesterday to do this film and the irony of it was I forgot the memory card for this uh, vlogging camera so <laughs> we're back on it today but no, I've not been down for a bit um, to do any photography not had any feed out there so we filled a couple of feeders up yesterday but there's just a few considerations you need to think about when you've got a little setup like this you know you've got to keep on top of it a bit of maintenance but also you've got to consider you know your subjects that you're going to be hoping to take pictures of and you've got to have your uh, your hide set up accordingly you know and all your little props and your branches and uh, just generally you know a few things to think about so we're going to get down there it's quarter past seven it's the last last weekend before the clocks go back so we'll get a bit more light in the morning next week but uh, look at that can't even focus where are we here we go quite struggling to focus there we go now you can hear me anyway but uh, yeah we'll get down there might even be a couple of deer about and uh, get set up we'll have a little uh, a little watch first we'll have a brew and a bicky and uh, see what's going on see what he is morning folks well it's that time of the year again where we've got to start thinking about hide work so it's what are we, nearly end of October I've been down a couple of times recently just having a look what's about just getting a feel for it but um, yeah if you've got a little setup like this you've got quite a few considerations really first off maintenance so get yourself down here you know oil the locks on the door oil the hinges on the latches check for any any rodent infestation you know what I mean They're, this time of year rodents are starting to look for places to shelter and nest so just you know have a check that they've, they've not chewed in anywhere um, check the roof you know if there's any any vegetation on the roof get it off any branches that have grown maybe into the into the felt you know trim them off just try and keep it clear really so ba basic stuff um, you know you've taken the time to to build the thing you know look after it maybe give it a you know a coat of uh, wood treatment if you want but uh, yeah yeah look after look after the thing and uh, you know it'll last a good a good while and then another thing while you're down here you know have a, have a few sessions before you decide to start putting your feeders out again and you know changing your props around your, your posts and perches just come down you know have a, have a have a couple of hours every now and again and just see what's knocking about because you don't know things new species might have might have moved into the area and then you can kind of adapt your setting towards you know what's coming like I mean I've got a I've got a, a belted post out there and um, I've seen a sparrow oak land on it so you know I've not seen that last year so you know you know species they move around and you know if they get settled in a, a particular area you might that might become a regular regular thing for it so yeah just get a get a feel about what you what species you're going to target because I know this this year in particular I want to I want to get some really nice J pictures I've had really good J pictures before but I'm just going to change the the feeding tactic with the J's because I generally put peanuts out from, and I don't, it's just a bit of a bugbear of mine, I don't like to see pictures of, of jays eating peanuts because it's, it's not a natural food source for them, so I'm going to start feeding them acorns because last year were rubbish for acorns, I couldn't find any, it, it just a really bad year for them, but this year there's tons of them about, so later on today I've got a right good location, I'm going to go and collect a lot of um, a lot of acorns 
get them back home, get them dried out. The thing is, with acorns, don't if you if you are going to go and collect them and use them for a you know feeding station, don't put them in buckets because the thing is they'll get damp, they'll start to go mouldy, and and they'll start rotting. So try and get them out on um, you know on sheets or or pieces of mesh and dry them out, store them like that. So that's that's going to be one um, one job this year is getting the jay pictures, the buzzards as well. I'm going to start feeding them shortly. I know people say you know you shouldn't feed stuff, but <clears throat> I mean it's roadkill that I've collected. It only goes out you know a couple of times a week, and it just it's just a bit of a treat for them. I mean, what's I, I don't see the harm in it to be honest. You know that roadkill is going to get eaten by something anyway, so you know it uh, it just helps them out during the winter. They're not reliant on it. It's not like I'm feeding them every day and they're becoming it, it's a you know a super reliable food source every day. I don't want that to happen. It's just something that they can see every now and again come down and give you the opportunity of a shot. So that's the thing feeding wise. Your feeders, really important to give them a good clean. All right, I just tend to clean mine in some Milton sterilising fluid. Uh, give them a good scrub, check them to bits. If you've got threads on them, um, oil the threads. You know, again, it's just, just basic maintenance stuff, really, just looking after things. Again, going back to the, uh, you know, the species that you're expecting to see, I mean, this, this particular spot where I'm set up, Last year the grass was mown, but um, the landowner, I asked him if he'd leave it, and he, he has done it. It's fantastic, and it's all grown wild. And there's a couple of areas that I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and cut it back a bit, just get a hand scythe, because there's certain species, you know, your red wings, field firs, uh, once they've you know, got rid of all the berries off the trees, they're probably looking for another food source. Now, I've photographed them in orchards before now, and I have loads of apples at home. There's, there's apples all over the place. Again, it's something, you know, a, a food source that you can collect. If your neighbours have got apple trees and they're not doing anything with them, just ask them whether you can take them. And again, store them. You can store them in paper and put them in, in boxes and they'll last, they'll last all winter. But it's something you can put out. You can put out for field furs. Um, you know, red wings will come down, thrushes, blackbirds, cracking food source. They're good for badges as well. You uh, you put some apples around a badger set and they'll they'll get tucked into them. So that's another thing. Deer, the deer will eat. You know when they're struggling as well, they'll. Um, so it's a it's a good food source. Uh, apples. So there's tons of them about. We've got a couple of apple trees. So all the windfall stuff. I collect all that as well. Yeah, going back to the uh, the perches as well. I mean, again mossy perches they look brilliant don't they but you take you take a you find a mossy perch in the woods you bring it out of its environment if you will and put it into a location like this that's open it doesn't last long um, you might get a few weeks out of it before that moss starts to die back so what I generally do I've got some some brilliant um, logs and perches out here fantastic shapes that took a long time to find what I'm going to do I'll take them back into the into the woods where I found them, where all that moss grew, because there's certain parts, I mean, it literally 50 yards that way, I've got um, a woodland permission where I've, I've photographed the deer before, it's full of mossy logs and branches. I bring them out here and it starts to die off. So those nice, you know, featured logs and perches that look really well with the moss on them, take them out, Put them back in the woods that moss will come back it'll grow on them again and then you can use it next year so you've got a rolling cycle of, um, of you know logs and perches that it just adds something to it you know when a, when that moss dies off the the branch looks dead so just adds a bit of life and a bit of color to it doesn't it having some uh, some nice moss on there Yeah, when you come down and uh, you, you know you're setting, setting the hide up, setting your perches up, looking at new new positions for things, bring the camera because it's it's one thing, you know, seeing it in your eye and thinking, yeah, that's going to look right, and I'm going to have that there, and that's going to look right, but you need to see it through the viewfinder. 
all right you know eye everything up take your time to get the to get the height of your perches right get the backgrounds right because it's so important it can just be literally when you when you've got a, a woodland background you've got dark patches you've got light patches you've got the trees are, are changing color as well so that can have a can have a big impact on on the final image so maybe even adopt one of them posts that i made you know the the adjustable post they're fantastic for you know giving you that that variation in height maybe knock one of them up but if you you know if you if you haven't got one of them just take your time you know scope it out through your viewfinder have a look think right that's no it's a too dark a background or it's too green a background and move things accordingly and take your time it's it's easy if you've got someone helping you as well you know if you've got an oppo who can come down you can say no move left a bit down a bit and and it's so much easier because you, you're back and forward and you know it, it's a, it can be a bit, little bit difficult on your own but it's worth taking the time to get the position of them uh, them props and them perches just right i'll tell you what i did yesterday when I came down, I see I put a put a bit of food in the feeders just to see what uh, what we're knocking about. Brought myself some secateurs down. Just just to the left of the hide, there's a well we're kind of set inside a um a hawthorn hedge and we get loads of birds in the you know, small birds in the hawthorn hedge. But the problem is because the, the hedge is so thick when you get when you get the birds in a position where you can photograph and there's a lot of foliage around so what i've done i've trimmed a lot of them back and i've just left a few prominent ones so that it, if we do get a bird on on the end of there you haven't got that messy background and you haven't got the chance of, of another branch being in front of it and obscuring it and already we've had i've had wrens down uh, great tits blue tits robins and they literally seem to be attracted to the end of those those isolated branches, which is fantastic. It's working a treat. Also, in between the main feeding station and the hedge, it's probably, I don't know, maybe 20, 25 foot. They seem a little bit reluctant because, it, because they're exposed. They're coming out of the shelter of the hedge where they've got that protection, you know, against sparrow oaks, birds of prey they seem a little bit reluctant and I noticed it last year so what I've done I've just put a perch in between and they seem to fly onto that get the confidence and then they go onto the feeding station so it's just a you know another another consideration for you if your feeding stations out in the open put a perch in between and uh, you know you've got a good chance to get some shots on that which we have already we've had a nice robin on the on the top of there so Little things to think about, you know. Yeah, just give these, uh, just give locks a bit of oil. Better using oil rather than WD-40 because they don't run out as much. And get some decent locks, that's crap. It might as well be made of chocolate, that one. We're going to change that. This is a decent one, little square. That'll last forever. A bit of oil. Just winterize them. Good to go. Yeah, so this is what I were on about before. So the, the hide is literally where the camera's set up. So we've got that one that's isolated. Just try and keep it clear behind. So, you know, just nip these off. We've got a clear, unobstructed view. We've got another one there. That's the next one. So again, if we get a bird landing on there, one of the small, small finches or, you know, the tits or whatever, we haven't got a load of foliage behind and we haven't got any branches in front that are going to obstruct it. That one, that's a little bit high pointing up, but we'll leave that one. That's not, that's not a problem. Coming back. So just trim them off. And then we've got 
that one that's the next one and then we've got this one here so in in line here we've got we've got four decent branches that there's a good chance that something's going to land on there's still tons of cover in here in the main hedge but just gives you a better shot of a nice uh, uncluttered photo so this is the perch I was talking about before so we're main feeding station here that's probably I say about 20 foot from the hedge this is where all the all the small birds tend to tend to congregate in here they've got safety in here so they're flying to there but they're a little bit tetchy so I've just put this here just halfway and what they'll tend to do they'll come on to the end of these branches so we have a chance of getting a shot on there they'll fly onto here not all the time and then they'll fly onto the feeding station and then back into the hedge so again gives you a little bit of an option something different you know you can uh, we can leave that in we could actually put a clamp on there we could put another branch on you know a nicer uh, twig we could even put um, like some of these trimmings that we've took off so you know with a bit of ortho in there it's got a few berries on you could even just clamp that on there there's a good chance you'll get a shot on there. It's just mixing it up a bit, you know. Just keeps the photos different, keeps them, you know, from getting stale as well. Now, I was talking before about um, about these these posts. This one in particular, I had some cracking J pictures on there last year. Some beauties, you know, stood on on that little that little branch that's coming out and it was full of moss you can still see remnants of moss on there but it, it's kind of had it now so we're going to take that one out we're going to put that back in the woods where all the moss grows and um, we're going to change that for another one might take 12 months for that to you know to get all mossed up again but you know it's it's good for next year we've got that rolling kind of a rolling program if you will of, of, of posts and branches that we can uh, we can keep going back to but that's a that's a crack of that so again looking down here the the hide is just behind the camera so what you want to consider is whether anything in the foreground is obstructing your post I mean we've got this little bit of a, a log set up out here only put this down yesterday so you know this will be nice for jays magpies we do get pheasants down here as well but you know sight it up just if there's anything we're not so here actually to be honest sometimes these can get in the way um, but I like to leave I like to leave them in might move that one good thing about these is Can just snap them off but the uh, the wrens they go mad for these they love them so what you can do that I mean these are these are dried to be honest so you can just pop them in the ground you know if there's a, a particular cluster of them yeah we can just drive that drive that in wherever we want it if there's a you know a few there we can just press that in the ground and we can have a we're on little setup if you will again you could put a few of them together but yeah for some reason the uh, not whether they're full of seeds them or not you know but uh, yeah we get we do get a lot of wrens on on these they seem to pick at them so yeah sight it up you know have a look that's where we're uh, where the buzzards tend to come down where I put that big um, a big log set up let's go down and have a look at that so I dragged this thing down the other day nearly killed myself but uh, yeah it's a belter is that um, this is where we're going to be putting you know we'll put our pheasants or whatever whatever we've got in the freezer that we've been picking up over the uh, over this the season and we'll hopefully get some buzzards on here. Uh, it'd be nice, it'd be lovely to get one landing on there. But um, 
it's just a shame that we've got this banking behind. Now, what I, what I will do, once I've got them feeding confidently, I might just try moving it, moving it forward a bit. They just seem to be a little bit reluctant to, to come down when, when <laughs> last year I tried moving it forward and they seemed a little bit reluctant. So whether they've gained a bit of confidence this year, I don't know. Um, but yeah, we'll just start off slowly. There's no, no great rush. But um, yeah, I'm hoping I'm hoping we're going to get some nice nice buzzing shots this year. Be great to get one on the end there. It really would. Yep, we're going to take this out now. There we go. So that's been in, been in practically. I don't know, probably about nine months. This one. A belting shape log, really, really unusual shape. So as you can see, you know all this, all this was full of full of bright green, fresh moss with fungi on it as well. Um, still some fungi down the bottom there where it's been in contact with the ground. So just shows you, doesn't it? You know that's that's been in, in contact with the grass and down at ground level, and then where it's been more exposed they've just died off so it's a tiny change in uh, in position can have a big effect on what actually grows on it so we're going to take that now a little feeding pot we'll take that off we can use that on the next one Swiss army knife never leave home without your Swiss army knife Great little tool to have. There we go. Yeah, stick one of them on your Christmas list. Invaluable. Right. Let's go and see if we can get some moss to grow on this. There we go. Look at that. Absolutely ideal for it. All we're going to do, we'll just put our, our log on there and we're just going to leave it, that's it. We'll leave that, we'll come back next year. So we'll just leave that and we'll go find another one to replace it. talking about <laughs> so <laughs> that was just stood there it's almost well it's self-supporting it's like a bloody tripod it's even got some ah now it's got some ivy growing on it this one so we're just going to reroute that when we uh, when we put it that is perfect so that is just standing up on its own We've got the ivy up there, we've got the moss on here. And if we can get, we can put a feeding pot on the back of there and get get a J on top of that, that would be absolutely perfect. So that's what we're going to take, we're going to use that. That's a brilliant little prop. Just nice with that. That moss on there. And so if we can get that, uh, get that little bit of ivy replanted in the ground and that will grow. That's a cracker. We'll have that one. Right, so that's our our new prop. So while we've that other one's back on the moss pile, we've got this. And what we want to do is that little bit of ivy on there. We want to keep that going. We want to keep that alive. So this hole that we we had the last one in, we're just gonna we've got some fresh soil there. Find a nice position for that. Obviously, in a, in a spot where have a look where the hide is. So the hide's in that orientation, 
I think that'll look cool like that. What I am going to do, it's a bit wobbly that. I think. Yeah. When I come back, I'm going to get a couple of uh, a couple of ground pegs, some big pegs, and we're just going to going to peg them two two legs down, so that's nice and nice and sturdy. But uh, yeah, I can see us getting some decent shots on there, especially the jays and the magpies. We'll put a nice big feeding pot on the back here with the acorns in. Start off with some peanuts, get them used to that, get them used to coming down onto it, and then we'll change it over onto the acorn pot. And uh, yeah, it's a belter, is that? It's a cracker. So, got a nice little little hole there. That's our root. You see all them fibres coming off. And we'll just bed that in. Move it this way just a little bit so it's not tight. And then just get some soil around there. Happy days, and that should that should carry on, carry on growing. That fantastic. Just looks nicer with a bit of ivy on it. Uh, it looks cool. So again, as we were saying before, the vlogging camera now is in exactly the same position as what the uh, the hide camera is going to be in. So. Sighted up, I mean, a couple of nettles here, they might just be in the way. We'll just take them out. I'm said, she's just trim them a bit. There we go. Some grasses here. We'll just drop them down trim them a bit there's nothing worse than having a real good setup a bird landing on it and there's something in the way it's all about preparation so it's worth taking that time to just get it set up sight it up and make sure you have nothing it only takes one branch or you know one one nettle stem or or whatever just to be in the way and it can ruin what could be a you know a killer shot so just worth taking your time and getting it right. Not so bad in the foreground, you know. It's nice sometimes to have uh, have some vegetation, you know, at the right height, and uh, it can add a real nice, nice effect. You know, you've got the blurred foreground as well. So, but yeah, that's all right. Is that? I'm happy with that. So there we go. That's that. Uh, that's that change round, and then. So once you've, um, you know, once you've got it changed around, just just have an hour. Just sit here, have a brew, get a brew on, and then just watch and see what happens. You never know, do you? You never know what's going to happen. So I think later today, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the review on that. Um, the hockey just got delivered the Tragapan hockey v3 slightly different uh, it's had a couple of modifications on it there's the big thing is the color difference um, I did I did you know mention a few concerns about the the color on the the monal but I mean it's been fine honestly it's a cracking idea is that so I'm hoping the uh, this hockey is going to be as good. Um, different kind of hide. It's a low-level hide, so I'm really I'm buzzing to get uh, get that out of the box and have a look at that. So that's what we're going to do later today. But yeah, for now, we're just going to have an hour. So we've done we've we've done a little film on uh, it was just a bit of a catch-up, really, a bit of a hide maintenance and uh, preparation for the hide season because that's what it is. The um, so the birds, the, the, the food's becoming a bit less scarce, all the leaves are coming down, so, you know, they're going to be looking for extra food sources and, um, you know, something like this, it's, it's perfect. You know, they're not completely reliant on it, but it just helps them along, doesn't it? You know, people say you shouldn't bait stuff and you shouldn't, well, you know, 
what, what do we do with garden birds? You're putting food out for them, aren't you? So, so like I said, I, I mean, you know, putting stuff out for the buzzards to come down. I've no great big issues with it. They're not reliant on it. It's just a bit of a, it's a bit of a bonus in it for them, and it's just helping them out through the winter. So, like I said, I'll I'll probably put stuff down two days a week for them. And if we get some pictures, we get some pictures, don't we? But uh, we had a bit of success last year, so yeah, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to it. It um, it's worth just putting that little bit of time and effort into it, you know, a bit of preparation, spend a couple of days getting all your perches right, getting your feeders clean, getting uh, just getting set up, and uh, yeah, you'll reap your rewards later on in the season, hopefully. So hey, thanks for watching us. Um, give us a like. Maybe subscribe, share it, whatever. And um, yeah, no, I, I really appreciate the support. I get some great comments off people, and I, I, I really do genuinely try and get back to everybody. If I haven't done, I'd, I apologise, but uh, yeah, I try and reply to everyone. Um, yeah, we're getting we're getting there. We're uh, we're nearly on 2,000 subscribers, so we'll do we'll do that walking stick uh, competition. So yeah, someone will win that. But yeah, thanks for watching us. Look after yourself, stay safe, and we'll see you out there.